Yes, that is one of the other things I was going to ask you about is the history of electrification and technology. I've heard you say that when Tesla electrified the World's Fair, that was like humans asteroid event, which is a great way to say it because artificial light is so disastrous to our health. But it's not just artificial light bulbs. It's not just LED light bulbs. It's EMF. It's power lines. It's everything, right? I mean, there's a deep. Well, you have to remember what we've been talking about in this whole podcast is that we are optimized. Our biology is optimized to the visible light spectrum. Any other part of the light spectrum is a problem for us. We do use the Schumann resonance, which is in the RF range. That's 7.83 hertz. But outside of that, everything else to us creates biologic tolls. And those biologic tolls create problems in us. That's really where it comes to. And the real problem that modern humans need to understand, and I really tried to parse this out in the Uberman um, podcast I do with Rick, is the number one non-visual photoreceptor in humans is melanopsin, which is a blue light detector. When I was in medical school, we didn't even know melanopsin existed, okay? Uh, now we know that it's present in our bones, our arteries, our fat, our skin. It's in every single tissue. And you know what tissues it's in the most? The human brain. So you got to ask yourself another question. Why would God or evolution put a blue light detector in us for what purpose? And then you ask the question, in 1893, Tesla electrified the surface of the planet. Basically, we've been walking in fucking blue light like crazy for 140 years now. And you don't think that that has any implications for, say, those magnetic singles called RS and RNS in your mitochondria? You don't think it has issues with maybe how your bone works or maybe with the way hemoglobin works with the sun? Because remember, this is an electromagnetic pollution. If you if you think this is a crazy idea, why is it when you get on a plane, the, they tell you, take off and landing, please turn off all your shit? Because they don't want it to interfere with the cockpit avionics, right? Well, why is that a big deal when we fly, but it's not a big deal when we live? Or why, why did they tell you, you know, if you have a pacemaker and you're walking through this part of the hospital, let somebody know? Because interference happens. I mean, your parents could probably tell you when they were younger and they were going to make out at a park and they had the AM radio station on and they were listening to the music, if they went under a power line, they got all white noise. That is evidence of an interference signal, you know, between the car that's made by power grid. Well, guess what? The same thing happens. If, if you really want to freak yourself out, go under a power line anywhere in your house, you know, main power line, and bring a couple of fluorescent tube bulbs with you. When you stand under the power line, you know what will happen? And you hold them up, they'll light up. Light up. Hmm. So if you can light something wirelessly through the air, which conducts, you're going to tell me that you don't think it's possible that you could affect your hemoglobin dissociation curve? You don't think that you could uh, affect your bone healing when you have a fractured leg and you live close to a power line? Or... You don't think that you could affect your schizophrenia if you live next to a 5G antenna. Turns out if you think that those things don't have that effect, then you've bought the hook, line, and sinker story of the centralized paradigm. Hmm. Yeah, it seems to be so. And so let me ask you this. So blue light, we get a lot of blue light from our screens, our devices, and all that kind of stuff, anything artificial. Do you think that's intentional? Would there have been a way to make screens produce beneficial light or is the technology yeah. not there? No, I mean, of course it's, uh, it's done on purpose. And that, that gets into a much deeper story. Uh, it's a story that I've talked about publicly. Um, haven't talked about it a lot, but where I started that story was uh, when I did Ruben's podcast the second time with Bobby Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, um, his dad and his uncle is where a lot of this story started. There was a, uh, a famous guy in the mafia who's from New York City who um, went out with the mob to Vegas and he found through trial and error over about seven to 10 years that if he blocked out all the sun by painting the windows and put blue lit one arm bandits in front of people and fed them alcohol, that he could steal their money without putting a gun on them. 
and he convinced the mob that if you pulled all your money that you were trying to launder and made casinos, he believed that you can make even more money doing this. So this guy, there's been movies made about this guy, okay? Uh, he was that smart because he paid attention. That's how it started. Then the CIA got wind of this, and they said, we want to study this. So they started a program called MK Ultra. MK stands for Mind Control. And what the CIA did is they hired this guy named Delgado. He was a PhD. They went down to Mexico and they put a, an electrode, semiconductive electrode in the, the bull's brain, wires to you know a receiver like you would play on a video game. And they wanted to see if they can control the bull's behavior. So when the bull charged the matador, they flipped the switch and the bull stopped immediately. They were like, okay, that's great. Then the second thing they did is can we do it? wirelessly. So they took the wires out, left the semiconductor in, and wirelessly they could do it. Then they got the third idea. Could we do this just with light? And they studied it and studied it and found out they could. And they found out that blue light was really important in destroying people's dopamine levels, and dopamine made you a more obedient idiot. So this was codified through from when the project went dark all the way until 1995, 96, when technology companies came out. That's when Google's algorithm, which was supported by the CIA, came out. Google and Meta today own all the patents for screen technology. That's why they're all blue lit. The reason why Apple uses it, because they got the same message. Anybody who uses a blue lit device, dopamine level drops. You become more addictive to that technology. Therefore, you make more money if you do it. That's the reason it happens, okay? This all started through the politicians. And for those of you who want to know why I brought this up to RFK, you may not remember that his dad, RFK Sr., went after the mafia in a big way. That's part of the reason why the mafia was involved with JFK's killing, and it's part of the reason they were involved with the CIA on, um, on RFK uh, dad's death. Mm -hmm. And that's where these links all came in. And um, blue light is probably the worst thing that you could do to lower your dopamine level and make you more compliant for the paradigm. That's why it exists. So it's incumbent upon you is changing that. You need to use Iris software, Efflux, protect yourself from the blue light, wear the blue blocking glasses, realize when you're a tech abuser, you need to take a set of smoke breaks or food breaks, go take an outside break and get some sun. Um, because even four, five, six minutes of sun can offset a lot of blue light hazard it's really important that you do that. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, I have that Flux app, but it seems to only lower the blue light uh, with the sun. Should it be always off with the blue well, light? It depends. It depends how you use computers. Um, if you're on the computer all day because your job, yes, I would do it. I would do it with that or with sunglasses. But you still realize that during the day you're supposed to get blue light balanced by red and UV in the sun. So that's the reason why you got to go out at least five minutes a day or just open up the window where you're at so that your eyes can get that. You got to give your body a break. You can't work eight straight hours in front of a computer and think that you're not going to get sick because you will. And so in terms of things we can do uh, in taking a break, that's great. What do you think about those grounding mats or these other kind of Never magnetized them. mats? Totally, totally not into them. Yeah, just go outside. Put your That's feet it. on the damn earth. Right. I mean, grounding mats, uh, the reason I don't like them is you're plugging a lot of these into the power grid. That brings dirty electricity and nasty stuff in. Even if you use a grounding rod for the grounding mat, you have to realize we now live in an area where we have 3G, 4G, and 5G. Those things jump conduct to things like copper wires that are hanging out your window going down to the ground. So if you happen to live in a place that's got a lot of non-native EMF in the ionosphere around you, uh, you using those grounding sheets or grounding pads may actually be a really bad idea. And I, I told another podcaster that I did recently the original story, um, and I forget who it was, but it was somebody from New York because when they tested this in New York, it, it, uh, it actually showed up in the newspapers there. They, they realized – they were going to have to change the power density to 5G antennas. So if you go down Park Avenue, even to this very day, 
drive down, you'll see these wires coming down all the buildings. They're not active anymore, but initially when they tested 5G, they were. When they first put them on about 10 years ago, um, there was reports of the horses that sat right outside of Central Park that stepped on the manhole covers and they got electrocuted and died. Because you remember on the bottom of their feet, they had shoe uh, horseshoes that were metal. And it turned out the 5G that was turned on on those buildings, jump conducted to anything that was metal. There was even people that were shocked from the light post in New York. So the electrical engineers realized they were going to have to re-engineer the waveform of 5G almost immediately. Those antennas were turned off. Now they put the antennas on top of buildings and uh, they've changed their antenna technology because obviously the cell phone carriers don't want you going around New York getting shocked and seeing horses drop dead in front of you because you might start asking questions. Hey, is this good for us? Remember, their goal is to keep you addicted to the cell phone. Can you believe it, people? A video clip and a peek into how that sweet THC sausage is made. For some people, I'm sure it's nice to put a face to the name, so I started making clips that are a little more YouTube-friendly than the full show tends to be. Get the full show on any podcasting platform. I prefer to keep it audio only, so we have a more decentralized distribution for a controversial show, and also so I can edit out the ums and ahs and barking dogs and all the things that happen when a person records in their home environment. And then if you really like the show, you can sign up for THC Plus, and instead of one-hour interviews, you get the full two-hour interview for just eight bucks. I think that's a better deal, more of a win-win than asking you to support the show by booking a therapy session or buying generic Viagra. It's getting weird out there, folks. So just go to the HiresideChats.com or click the link at the top of any set of show notes and all your wildest dreams will come true. All right. All right.